Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM, joining you from San Diego as usual. And today I'm joined by Rachel Cipriano, who is the CEO and founder of Magnificent Resilience. And you are based where? I am based in St. Charles, a suburb of Chicago. Oh, excellent. So we're joining us from Chicago. And what we wanted to talk today with Rachel about is her book that is coming out within the next month, and it's called Magnificent Resilience, The Psychology, Psychology of Success and Significance. So, I mean, first off, um, Rachel, you have a, you know, a background in psychology, and that how did you, why did you, uh, or how did you come to write this book? What was the genesis of it, and why do you think it's an important thing? Okay, well, the genesis for me is kind of my signature story. I was born nine and a half months after my father returned from a combat tour in Vietnam as a U.S. Marine, mm -hmm. and he came back extremely traumatized, as so many of the Vietnam veterans did, unwelcomed by the country, and so he really wasn't in position to handle myself, and then I had an older brother as well. And so basically for anyone who's seen the movie Full Metal Jacket, which is kind yeah. of a movie about that time period, I lived like that for 15 years. So it gave me a great opportunity to establish resilience. Mm -hmm. And I believe that everything that happens to us, there's always a commensurate benefit, a silver lining in the cloud. And for me, it has enabled me to give many, many insights into what it takes to be resilient. And that is so relevant in the business world and all of our lives personally. You know, there are a lot of challenges we're all going to face, as I said, both professionally and personally. And we need to know how to handle those challenges with resilience. Yeah, no, and I couldn't agree more. And I think in many ways, uh, the pervasive culture today is sort of uh, puts forward a different message. It's like, don't be resilient, just change, you know, switch out, whatever, whether it's in personal relationships, just change, just go somewhere else, do something else. Don't, don't bother staying resilient. So I think it's a timely message. And I will say one more thing, just on the note that you said about your father, is uh, I do think that any of our men and women who serve the country deserve to have the best, the best of the best, resources and treatment and everything available to them because they go to do things the rest of us don't want to or don't have to do and we should they should be at the top of the list not at the bottom i think it's outrageous but anyway that's just an aside <laughs> uh, i couldn't agree more <laughs> exactly all right so let's talk a little bit about uh, resilience as i was looking at the outline of your of your um, your book and uh, I love that first chapter title, like the triumph of a comeback, right? Because let's yeah. face it, we've all had we've all had situations, setbacks in our lives, right? And so explain to me a little bit about the triumph of a comeback. Definitely. Um, I think that, you know, there's a phrase that I really like, kind of a proverb, though a righteous person may fall seven times, they will be lifted up again. Mm -hmm. And I think that we've all had those experiences where life just gives us an arrest. You know, we're stopped in our tracks. Sometimes we fall down. And the exciting thing is, and the truth is, that if we will remain resilient, we have the proper tools, inevitably we'll be able to get back up again. But unfortunately for some people, they just look at their circumstances as permanent and they don't realize that, you know, no matter what the situation is, if you will hold on, that life does have a way of turning around if we learn the right coping strategies. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess probably for most people, I mean, when they faced uh, issues, maybe in business or in their personal life, sometimes, as you say, they don't feel like they can really overcome them, have the resilience. But if you go back and look through your life in totality, I think in everybody's lives, they will find that there were times when they were faced with some adverse situation and they did overcome it. And I guess that's part of it, right? Is going back and sort of saying, well, actually I do, I do know how to, I do know how to overcome. I can persevere. Absolutely. I think 
you uh, touched on something very key. It can be very powerful to review past challenges and recognize that even though your current present challenge professionally or personally may seem insurmountable, if you'll just draw upon your own life experience, or sometimes it can be helpful to draw upon Mm -hmm. the life experience of other people, whether it be somebody you know or a famous example, you know, there's so many times that we can see that if we will just hang in there and stick with it, we can persevere. But like you'd mentioned earlier, so often now, there's too much the message that everything has to be exactly the way we like it. And if it isn't, you know, don't stick with it. Just give up on that business, give up on that marriage or whatever the case might be. And it doesn't have to be that way. No, exactly. And this whole um, mantra or culture that's out there of, you know, you should be happy all the time. Well, you know, that's not reality. But also, you know, happiness comes in very different in different forms, too. Um, But yeah, I I absolutely, absolutely agree. Um, There's an intriguing uh, chapter of one of your books called A Magnificent Paradox. And I love paradoxes anyway, so I can't wait to hear what a magnificent paradox is. (laughs) Well. There's a quote from Ernest Hemingway that I love, and it says, the world breaks everyone, but afterward, many are made strong at the broken places. Mm -hmm. And I believe that really is a paradox that kind of like even when you break a bone, as painful as that is, it will be stronger, the body's healing power and what it takes to come in there and restore it will make that bone stronger. And in my own life, I felt like my brother and I were two POWs in a way. And unfortunately, when I was 30, um, when I was expecting my first child, I received a phone call uh, and I learned that my brother had taken his life. And even though that was an incredibly difficult phone call and I felt like one of the POWs had made it and the other one didn't Mm. somehow through that tragedy it made me all the stronger in terms of wanting to help other people not have to receive phone calls like that right you know establishing tools and strategies to help people themselves and others in their lives figure out how to deal with those. Uh, Sometimes it's brokenness and trauma we face in our life in many cases. And how are we going to be stronger through it? Mm -hmm. No, it's a, and it's a very, it's a very uh, poignant point. Uh, There are, I mean, people have all of these uh, often, you know, traumatic events that happen in their lives. But as you say, you see a lot of people come out of it, uh, out of them stronger and rebound, not everybody, but most people. So what is what is the key to being able to embrace a situation and really start to say, okay, I'm going to turn this to my advantage. I'm going to, I'm going to create something positive out of what looks like complete awfulness right now. Yes. Um, two key qualities. Resilience has been studied by many a psychologist and other researcher and two key qualities have emerged through extensive research and it's persistence and flexibility. We've talked a lot about persistence, you mm-hmm. know, just you think of that little engine that could, you know, I think yeah. that it, just sticking with it, even in spite of what looks like very adverse circumstances. Also, though, flexibility, you know, some people just kind of come to planet Earth a little more rigid in their thinking style. And so Mm -hmm. they have to go into this knowing that, okay, I have to grow in this area. This isn't necessarily going to come naturally to me. But if I want to be that resilient person, be truly successful and significant, I need to learn greater flexibility if plan A doesn't work. What about plan B, C, D, et cetera, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, and that's a great point because that is something, and and I, I, I focus on this a lot, you know, is that at the end of the day, you do need to invest in yourself. You can't wait around for other people to do, whether in business or personal life or whatever. 
But the flexibility is a great example, right? People can't teach you flexibility. You need to learn it. And I think that's the point is you need to sort of go, okay, uh, my rigid way of, of operating isn't working that well. Well, I just need to open myself to perhaps some other ways of doing things. Just open a little bit. And when you open a little bit, you know, things start to, it's like when you crack open the door, suddenly the door gets, you know, shoved completely open. But yeah. I think that's it. I mean, I think that's something that you have to do yourself, right? Nobody can teach you to be flexible, right? Absolutely. Well, I think that you can learn tools and strategies. You know, another quote I like is, um, courage is not the absence of fear, but the acquired yeah. ability to move beyond fear. Mm -hmm. And I like that idea of acquired ability, that we can acquire tools and abilities but it's not just going to fall on us. Sure. And as I mentioned earlier, it's kind of important to recognize a little bit about um, your own personal temperament because sometimes certain individuals just naturally tend to be a bit more rigid than others. Sure. I think the younger generation has a bit of advantage of living in a world that changes so quickly. Mm -hmm. The flexibility is a strength. Yeah. For them yeah. and that they time, may they you may know. they may find that they're too flexible. There may be a dependent uh, yeah. may go too far. <laughs> <laughs> That's true too. We got to be careful, but um, <laughs> absolutely. Well, and that's an aspect of resilience, just that ability to adapt and bounce back and and have that flexibility to not break in the midst of you know. Mm -hmm. the challenges but again one of the one of the things i talk about is that when you're young sometimes even your bones are more flexible but as mm -hmm. you age and you face so many different obstacles challenges sometimes not even resolved obstacles and challenges yeah. it kind of starts to pile up and that's when the tools are all the more important to learn yeah, no, I couldn't agree more because I think one of the things that uh, people don't do enough of it, particularly, you know, and, and it's particularly true as, as people get older, is understanding their triggers, right? I mean, we all have triggers and they're all based on, on past experiences and they can get triggered at any moment. And until we recognize what those triggers are, we can't, you know, address them, right? And make sure we control them. Uh, otherwise, it's like, I mean, I often say, you know, even in business or whatever, you can go into a situation or a meeting and somebody does something or looks at you or says a certain word and that triggers something in you and it's got really nothing to do with what's going on, but suddenly you're in a bad space, right? Absolutely. And one thing I really emphasize in my book is the importance of becoming more conscious and intentional. I talk about a concept of metacognition to think about what you're thinking about. And the more that you are cognizant of what exactly is going on within your body, within your mind, within your spirit, the more ability you're going to have to manage that but if it's just a stream of consciousness you're not even aware of then like you said it can just kind of take greater control over you yeah. and you want and that I, proactive versus reactive i apologize yeah no 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 absolutely and th that whole idea of as you say i mean you have been self-aware and intentional and understanding these things and realizing you know that often these things like triggers or whatever it is you know, they have a mental, but they also have a physical manifestation. And once you recognize that, you can say, well, I'm getting very tense right now, right? Or whatever. Yes. My body's getting tense. Therefore, if I think about what I'm thinking about, your metacognition, I realize that this is all connected and I need to, to calm myself. So talk to me a little bit about that whole concept of self-awareness and being intentional, because I think that is, I honestly think if there was one thing that everybody could do that would exponentially make their lives better is an increased level of self-awareness. Absolutely. Um, I, one thing I encourage my coaching clients to do is to journal because it can amaze people what exactly is going on in that stream of consciousness. Mm -hmm. But if you have it down on paper, now you can start kind of challenging some of those beliefs that may be unhelpful or actually uh, self-sabotaging in some cases. If you've got it right in front of you, you can start addressing it because sometimes our emotions, and as you said, it's so important to know what's going on in our bodies. Mm 
That we can't always directly change, but mm-hmm. through looking at our thoughts and challenging some of those irrational, unhealthy beliefs, we can begin to experience changes in our bodies and in our emotions as we start thinking in healthier ways and more productive ways for our success. So. Yeah. No, I totally agree. I mean, I think we have to think about it is, um, okay, if you if you eat fast food four times a day, right, every day, mm-hmm. you know what the result is going to be, right? Uh, you have to also look at what is it, what are you nourishing your brain with? What are you inputting into your consciousness, right? So again, mm-hmm. if you're just inputting negative, you know, bad things, whatever, then the result is going to be the same as if you had fast food four times a day, every day. Most definitely. And unfortunately, there are many people who've grown up in environments where they did get that kind of steady diet, or Mm. perhaps they're in a toxic work environment uh, currently, and they have to learn how to counterbalance that very proactively. Perhaps, you know, if it truly is a toxic environment, they can't make proper adjustments to, they might need to look at transferring or, you know, really addressing that because what I say is human connection is the oxygen of Brasilia, but those toxic relationships that are inevitable, you know, there's just a lot of unhealthy people out there. Mm -hmm. We have to mitigate those relationships. We have to try to limit the time and then counterbalance it with healthy, positive relationships. Yeah, no, absolutely. And to be honest, I think uh, that there are times when you have to look around the circle of the people surrounding you. And if you say this person is toxic or this person doesn't make me feel good, and maybe it's not even entirely their fault, you know, maybe, but you have to remove them from, and you have to make sure that you're only surrounded. And that, and I think that's tough for people sometimes because that may mean reducing your circle of people to a very, very small uh, group, which I think is personally more positive because it's better to have a few mm-hmm. positive people around you than it's to have a you know a hundred less positive people around you. I think it's all about quality rather than quantity. It really is. In fact, uh, Abraham Maslow, who uh, studied the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, he yeah. developed that, which I'm a big believer in. He found that those people at the top of his hierarchy, the self-actualized people, as they called them didn't have very many friends. They had two or three close, deep, meaningful relationships of people who were like-minded and evolved. And that actually added greatly to their success and their ability to achieve so much. So... And there's one and one last thing I just wanted to touch on before we go. I mean, you talk about altruism and you talk about service and synergy. So why why are those things important? Well, one thing I make a case for with people is that it's in their own best interest to evolve more as a person, become more other centered, because if you are looking at your value proposition in the marketplace, what people are asking is how are you going to solve my problem. Mm -hmm. So if you're an other centered person, truly other centered, not somebody putting on a mask, but if you really mastered altruism, you're going to make yourself far more marketable and formidable in the marketplace. And personally as well, people want to be around people who care about them. So Mm -hmm. it's just to your own advantage and obviously it's to the advantage of the whole world for people to become more caring and thinking of other people yeah and it also in some ways it allows you to focus less on yourself and focus outwards and by doing that when you refocus on yourself maybe then you're focusing on the things that matter and not focusing on a lot of things that don't really matter Absolutely, definitely. Sometimes when we're too focused on ourselves too, we can kind of dwell on self-pity, mm-hmm. some the negative. And sometimes just when we get ourselves off our minds, that can be a very productive thing for our own well-being. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> getting our getting ourselves off our own minds. I like that yeah. a lot. 
Um, listen, Rachel, we're bumping up against the end of our time. So before we go, okay. I want you to tell people a little bit more about yourself and how they can learn more about you. And then I would like sure. you to come back. Um, when the book has been published, I'd like you to come back again and we could discuss some more of the, uh, the parts of your book because I think this is a fascinating subject. I would love to do that. Um, again, my website is rachelcipriano.com. I have a YouTube channel with uh, quite a bit of content out there that I encourage you to peruse of the same name, Rachel Cipriano, and uh, Facebook, Twitter. I'm available for coaching and speaking engagements, and I hope to have my book out in the next month, both on Kindle and Create Space. Excellent, excellent. Well, Rachel Cipriano, this has been a fascinating conversation. The book is Magnificent Resilience, The Psychology of Success and Significance. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeline and CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you.